Tonight we are going to also touch on the, on the theme or on the topic, what must I do? Yesterday we talked about what must I do as a wife to succeed in my marriage. And tonight we are talking about what must I do as a husband to succeed in my marriage. What must I do? Because in the kingdom of God or in Christ, there is always what you have to do in order to enjoy what God has ordained for us to enjoy. One thing we, we have to understand is that in the kingdom of God, nothing is automatic. There is always what you must do in order to enjoy what God has ordained for you to enjoy. Praise the Lord. Lack of knowledge as to what we must do is what is causing all kinds of problems in Christendom. Lack of knowledge as to what we must do is what is causing all kinds of problems in Christendom. And so if you and I will care enough to learn what we must do and then apply our lives to it, then we can be sure of the success that God has ordained for us. And you know, in Christ, when we are doing what God is, you know, has access to do, our success is unlimited. It is unlimited. And that is what will be happening to us in the name of Jesus. Amen. And so, so far we have come to establish that marriage is good. Marriage is good. Marriage is good. Because God calls it good. So nobody can call it bad because no one is wiser than God, the all-wise God, the all-knowing God, the one who instituted marriage says marriage is good. And so marriage is good. Praise the Lord. And we also came to understand that marriage is, is a union. It is the coming together of two persons of the opposite sex with a view of building a God-centered home. Now we are talking about Christian marriage. And so marriage is the coming together of two persons with a view of building a God-centered home. A God-centered home. So marriage is the union of two persons of the opposite sex. That is why the Bible says, and when God made the man and he saw that man was not good, the Bible says, and God made a woman. God made a woman. God made a woman for the man. God did not make another man for the man. And so marriage is between a man and a woman as far as God is concerned. Praise the Lord. And um, we also came to understand that um, the success or the, the, the well-being of the society depends on the marriage because it is the homes that come together to form the society. So when there are problems at home, there will be problems in the society. Um, I was reading a book uh, about this um, Madam Teresa and uh, there was a time she was interviewed and they asked her what is the solution to all the problems we are having in this world. And Ma Madam Teresa answered it in a very simplest way. She said, let everyone go home and love his family. That's the solution. So as far as she was concerned, all the problems in the world is traceable to problems at homes. Because when there are problems at homes, we carry it into the society. So if everybody could go home and love his family, if there is love in the home, then there will be love in the society. Glory be to God. And I agree with her. What she said is the truth. If every if the home can be peaceful, then the society or the environment we live in will also be peaceful. Now that tells you how important the home is. And that is the reason why the enemy is bent on destroying the home. That is why the enemy is bent on bringing chaos and, and misunderstanding and, and division in the home. You know, because he wants to destroy the society. And he knows very well that if he is going to succeed in destroying the society, then he must first begin from the homes. You know, so that is why there seems to be too much attack on homes, on marriages. But the good news is the devil has failed in Jesus' name. Amen. There is nobody here that will suffer any breakdown in your marriage again. 
in the name of Jesus. So today, we're touching on what must I do as a husband to succeed? What must I do as a husband to succeed? What must I do as a husband to succeed? In the book of John chapter 15 and verse number 14, Jesus says something, that ye are my friends if ye do whatever I command you. Ye are my friends if ye do whatever I command you. Ye are my friends if ye do whatever I command you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. If you do whatever I command you. So that makes us to understand that you can make Jesus the friend of your family. You know, there's this we call family friend. You know, like sometimes you look at somebody and say, oh, this is our family friend. Now, I would rather lose everyone and make Jesus my family friend. Pray, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah, you turn the scripture around. So just, just reverse it for us again. It's 1514. <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord. Ye are my friends if ye do whatsoever I command you. So, you can make Jesus your family friend by adhering to his commandment concerning marriage. And the good thing is, if Jesus becomes your family friend, what kind of a devil will tamper with your family? You know, so the reason why the enemy seems to have access into our homes is because... Jesus hasn't become the friend of the home. He is not the friend of the family. And this is because we are not adhering to his word, to his commandment, to his principle in the home. The wife is doing whatever she wants. The husband is doing whatever he wants. And so Jesus cannot be the friend of the home. Because according to his word, we, he only becomes our friend when we do what he commands us. And so like I said yesterday... The commandments of God concerning the home was not written by the wife or the husband. It was written by God. And so to make Jesus the friend of our home, our home we have to adhere. We have to adhere to it. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, please let somebody take care of the children for us. I don't want them to be walking in and out here. It's causing a lot of distraction. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So, it takes obedience to the word of God for God to become the friend of the home. So it is possible to make Jesus the friend of the home. So now it goes to the husband. What must I do to succeed in my marriage? Or what must I do to make Jesus the friend of my home? Because everybody here, I want to believe that everybody sitting here tonight want Jesus to be the friend of your family or the friend of your home. But then, it is not automatic. There is what we have to do. And we are going to quickly go into that to see what we have to do. Because we have already established the fact that the family is very, very important to God. And the moment you get married, God doesn't know him. God doesn't know her. God knows them. So, if God comes into the home and he cannot see them, then he must withhold his blessings. Because the Bible, when God made the woman and gave the woman to the man, the Bible says, and then God blessed them. God didn't say, Adam, you are the head, so I'm blessing you and it will affect your wife. Or if you are my last born, so I want to pamper you, I'm blessing you rather, so it will affect your husband. No, God blessed them. And God blessed them because he saw them as one person. Praise the Lord. So when we get married, God bless, he blesses the home. He blesses them. He blesses them. And um, we, we, we saw that uh, in, in many areas in, in, in the Bible, in the life of, of our father Abraham and our mother Sarah, God blessed them. We, in the New Testament, you come to a place where, uh, uh, um, you know, Paul was talking about um, uh, uh, 